Nancy Sinatra's records always have great sounding bass tracks. There's a recording technique that was first used in the 1950s and remained popular into the 1970s. It's the recording trick of using multiple basses on a song, with each bass providing a unique tone, and the combination creates a huge sound that is heard on so many great records and productions. Usually there's an upright or acoustic bass providing the deep, sub-bass tones. Often these basses are felt more than heard on the records. That low upright bass is combined with a four-string electric bass or a six-string electric baritone bass. Today we're going to explore the combination of upright bass and a six-string baritone guitar. Dan Electro first introduced the six-string bass in 1956. Not to be confused with the modern six-string bass, which has a much wider neck and different strings, these baritone guitars were sort of in between a guitar and a bass, and could be used for either. Lee Hazelwood was one of the first producers to combine upright bass and six-string bass. He used it on Dwayne Eddy's hit, Rebel Rouser. He called it click bass. Then Phil Spector used the technique on his wall of sound. Brian Wilson loved the sound and used it on his productions. Producers and players in Nashville were also developing the same sound, and they called it tic-tac bass. Nancy Lee again was an epic production featuring a 40-piece band. Chuck Berghofer played upright on all the songs, and either Ray Pullman or Chuck Colazzi played electric bass. I spoke with Chuck Colazzi recently, and he said he used a Dan Electro six-string bass, but also often played a Fender six that Jerry Cole would bring to sessions and loan him. Jerry Cole played guitar on Nancy and Lee again. To further explore this technique, I have an upright bass and a 1962 Fender 6 bass that belonged to Wrecking Crew member Al Casey. <laughs> 